What's going on everybody, YouTube? Hey, so today we've got a Freightliner Cascadia. We've got a bit of a check engine light. That's related to something else. However, the fault code, let me give you that fault code right now. It is giving me a fault code of, let's plug in here, let's see what we've got. You're gonna need your software to check some of these things out. And we've got a fault code of, da -da -da, there we go. So actually this is what's causing the problem. It's a DPF outlet temp sensor. I'll show you which one that is in a second. When we do a regen, that temperature got really high at about 1200 degrees, which is way more than normal. So we replaced the sensor. We checked out the, actually, let me do it right now. Let me turn this off for a sec, hold on. Hold on guys, I'm gonna go over and do this while we're shooting. Uh, this way you guys can get a pretty good idea of what is going on. So. <laughs> This is all one box related. So before you start taking out your one box and before you start sending the filters to get cleaned, so you have your temp sensors, okay? This is gonna be your DLC inlet, DLC outlet, okay? And this is going to be right back here. This is gonna be your DPF outlet temp sensor, okay? Uh, pain in the butt to remove. Uh, we had to kind of make this a little bit bigger so we can get a socket and start loosening things up. And again, this is just a heat shield. I know it looks ugly and it's unpleasant. So anyway, we replaced that sensor. We're gonna do a regen right now, but when I first did the regen, uh, this sensor was reading at about 1200 degrees, which is insane, okay? This hose was replaced. This is part of your pressure, so it's a DPF pressure. This tube feeds up into a pressure sensor, which is right in there, okay? The other thing I did is I went ahead and checked my doser. When I was doing the first regen, Within 10 minutes, which is pretty strange, uh, the doser itself was starting to work. So this is the diesel doser. So we removed this doser, we cleaned the carbon, and we found out that it was actually sticking open. So I replaced All right, guys, so this is the diesel doser injector or seventh injector, really depending on what you wanna call it. Uh, this is located again behind the turbo, whether it's a Series 60, DD13, DD15, DD16, same thing. So what I typically do is remove this. I look at the end where it sits. I look at the carbon buildup. I will blow a little bit of shop air into it. And I look at this little valve here. Okay, this valve will either, if it's being injecting diesel, obviously it comes out, lets the diesel spray, and then it goes back in depending on the pressure. I noticed on this particular truck, when I sprayed it with uh, some shop air, this little valve or stem was sticking out. So my guess, this was actually the problem and probably not the sensor, but I replaced the sensor anyway, just to be on the safe side. So again, this little bad boy uh, either will make your temperatures probably shoot through the roof or not go up at all. So anyway, just wanted to show you the diesel doser injector. Replaced it with another one that I have here. Hopefully that's going to work. Um, at the same time, we went ahead and cleaned out any carbon that's gonna be back here, okay? That's not causing it. My guess was this is getting stuck open. I'll confirm that right now. Hopefully that was the problem and we don't have to dig any deeper into this. Okay guys, so we fired up the truck and what you're going to want to do and you need your software to do this, you're gonna to need to do a regen, a parked regen. That way you can check your temperatures, okay? DOC in, DOC out, DPF out. This was the one that's giving us the reading of 1200 degrees. So by default, it will actually turn itself off. It will shut down as a protection. This way you're not gonna melt the box or cause any damage, okay? The other thing you're gonna look at, of course, is gonna be your fuel doser percentage PSI. Right now it's not there because we're not doing a regen. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a regen. It's a good idea to also have a timer. So let's, let's let that, uh... there we go. See, you can hear that warming up. This is our DOC inlet pressure. That's pretty low, so that's good. That tells me for now, we don't have a face plug situation, okay? So I'm gonna let this warm up. I will keep you guys posted. I will show you guys what I find. Okay guys, so just to give you guys a heads up, again, DOC inlet pressure is 0 0.399, which again, is really good. Right now, typically the first 10 minutes are a warm up period. As you can see, the DOC inlet is at 477 and that will continue to climb. DOC outlet temp, 400 and then the last one should always be last is your DPF outlet okay right now we don't have any diesel being dosed through the injector or what some guys call the seventh injector or the doser block okay right now again 
this is just a ramp up period, uh, warm up period, essentially is what that is. So we're only a few minutes in, but I wanna kind of explain what I'm looking at or what I'm looking for, okay? So I'm gonna let this do its thing. I'll show you guys uh, what we find in a minute. Right now, you're gonna see a percentage. Really quick, 60%, and again, it should not be dosing right now. If you're gonna notice on the middle right of my screen where it says pending, Okay, that is a thermal engagement, so it's got to warm up again, as I mentioned, and now it's actually doing the active regen. So this is kind of strange. I have to see what else is going on. The fuel, the doser fuel pressure line, the PSI is at 17 and the percentage is at seven. So this thing is already starting to dose, it looks like. I'm just gonna hang tight. I'm gonna see what's going on. And again, we're going to watch our temperatures. All right, so we are about 10 minutes into a parked regen. DOC pressure, not too bad. DOC inlet temp, 685, that's pretty normal. DOC outlet temp and DPF outlet temp, 966, 960. So they're right in the same ballpark. So, so far, so good. I'm gonna let this regen keep going. Um, again, if the issue continues with the DPF outlet temp really spiking above normal, then we have obviously another problem going on. Maybe an internal problem with the one box, maybe the DPF filters. I don't know yet. I don't want to pull the filters out because once you get them out, at that point, you may have to, you know, essentially get them replaced, clean, or you have to buy new clamps. And as we all know, those clamps are not cheap. They do sell them in a set, and I think they're about a hundred something bucks each times two. So again, right now, those are our temperatures. Not too bad. We're about 10 minutes in. Um, it's a little high, I think, for 10 minutes in, but I'll keep you guys posted and we'll go from there. So we are about 15, maybe 20 minutes in, probably a little bit closer to 15. And these are our temperatures right now, which they seem to be pretty steady. Uh, the first time I did this, it literally shot up to uh, 1200 degrees, and that was right there on the DPF outlet temp. So again, right now, the temperatures look pretty good. Again, we're only about 15 minutes in. Um, I want this to go through the entire regen process, so this will take about 30 to maybe 40 minutes, depending on how dirty the filter is. Right now, the DPFs are actually at level zero, or zone zero, so that's good. Um, I'm hoping this will be probably closer to about 35 minutes or so. So again, I'll keep you guys posted. Obviously, this will not be a 35-minute video, hopefully closer to about a 10-minute video. So again, I'll keep you guys posted. There's your pressures. Pressures look pretty good. Uh, temperatures look good. So again, so far. So here we are about 20 to 20, maybe closer to 25 minutes now at this point. Uh, there we go. Okay, I got to make sure I charge this laptop better next time. So just to give you again, what's going on, DLC inlet pressure, really good. It's actually dropping a little bit, not much, which is okay. And then we have our temperatures, which we're looking at DLC inlet, 700. And the last two, 1000 and 1000. Again, those are going to stay pretty close to each other. We're still dosing fuel, which is good. Again, I don't see uh, I don't see the fault code. Let me actually go back to the fault code. Okay, this has some other fault codes. Again, completely unrelated to what we're looking at. And in this case, we're looking at fault code 34. I'm sorry, 3246 FMI zero. Okay, which is DPF outlet temp very high. So right now, we're still within the limits, which is actually really good. I'm uh, I'm really pleased with the way this is turning out right now. I was hoping to. Uh, I was hoping what we did fixed it, and it looks like so far so good. So again, right now temperatures are good. I'm just showing you guys what's going on, what to look for, and uh, I'll show you guys a little bit more. So just a little uh, peek behind the curtains. We are about 30 minutes into the regen. Temperatures are consistent. They are not uh, spiking like they did at first, and we still have, same thing. DOC inlet 734, DOC outlet 1000, almost 1100 pretty normal DPF outlet it's right on pretty much on the money um, I feel pretty good about this 30 minutes in we're gonna let it keep going uh, do not stop it do not abort it you have to confirm what you're doing uh, this is why this stuff takes so damn long especially when you go into a shop it's not something where you can just plug in and be like okay clear the code go no you have to go in you got to do a regen then you got to let it cool off and then do a regen again and it's, it's very time consuming, but anyway, this fault code, it looks like everything is good. I like that. So for now, I'm gonna stop the video and I will be back hopefully once it's successful.
Now, one other thing I forgot to mention or go over is this little bad boy here, Knox Efficiency. This is the code I probably get the most. You know, people want to know more about it. And we are at 0.72, so that's still passing technically. Um, most trucks, from what I understand from Detroit, this truck has, let me give you an idea here, it's got 600,000 miles on it, which is not very much. But according to Detroit, they only, uh, the filters last about three quarters of a million miles before you have to replace the actual one box itself. Right now, Knox efficiency, not too bad. It's at 70, uh, 71, almost 72%. So I just wanted to show you that this code, not related to that. Um, that's a whole different ball game. But I just want to show you that as well. I just actually completely forgot to bring it up. So we're going to go back here again. Temperatures are good. So let's keep it going. Okay, guys. So we are actually done with the regen. Those are our temperatures. Not bad at this point. It's going to start cooling off, which is again normal. RPMs will still be up and that'll start to drop as it starts cooling off. So this has actually been really successful. Those other codes are not related to the code I'm looking at right now, which is going to be 3246 FMI zero. So that's pretty awesome. I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, let me get into the other screen. Let's see what the NOx efficiency is. Uh, oh, 78. Not bad, actually. So this filter still has some life left in it. Okay, when I say the filter again, I mean the one box, the SCR, the DOC, the DPF. So those are pretty good. Uh, the fact that we're at 78, almost 80%, not bad, actually. Pretty good. So back to the temperatures, I'm gonna go back to the DPFs and those temperatures will start to drop. That does not mean the filter is not hot or the one box is not hot because it is very hot. So I would say uh, do a regen. I mean, it sounds kind of stupid to say this, but do a regen where it's safe. Don't do it next to some dry stuff or anything like that. Um, and then don't touch it, let it cool off. So at this point we're done. That's pretty much it. The video is all set. Guys, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions as always hit me up. I try to get back to everybody as soon as possible. So this truck is good. We're gonna we're gonna <clears throat> excuse me wrap it all up and we're done, guys. Thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. Have a great day.